The rapid advancement of technology is really exciting and it creates a lot of potential applications and use cases for industry. However, just because we can use a piece of kit doesn't mean we should. So engaging the people who are likely to have to use the technology that we're interested in, getting them to test and trial the technology is really important to obtain feedback. Research shows us that if technology is easy to use and perceived to be useful, then the uptake will be much more rapid and effective. Traditionally, shipbuilding has been an industry that hasn't had a lot of technology adopted in its processes. One of the objectives of our program is to help to accelerate the uptake of Industry 4.0 within to our own business and also our supply chain. We have undertaken research with our research partner, Flinders University, to understand the impediments of the adoption of technologies, understanding the cultural aspects and not just simply the ergonomics of the, the, the technology, but how the technology will be accepted in, in a workforce. It's a big undertaking to commit to implementing something like the HoloLens or, or Spot the Robot for a business when you know, all you've seen is effectively the sales and marketing literature and you don't really know how it's going to apply in the industrial context. Factory of the Future is a great opportunity to simulate that production or industrial environment, see how the technology performs, identify any issues that need further investigation before having to make a significant commitment. Turn around. That's it, just yeah, try to move. It's not, not going to crash. <laughs> it has a collision avoidance function. Does it? Yeah. So Spot the Quadruped uh, robot does gain a lot of attention with many people uh, describing it as a cool piece of kit. In terms of realistic applications, focus tends to be more on safety and well-being. A lot of users found um, working with Spot um, quite natural. So um, the controller is very similar to um, Nintendo or Switch uh, game controls and so often people who'd have that experience or that familiarity were quite keen and, and naturally um, transferred those skill set to using Spot. I suspect my 10 year old son would have driven it better than I would because it's basically driven by what looks like a Nintendo Switch controller. But once you got the hang of it, um, really it was, it was pretty simple. Um, the other challenging thing is because it's remote uh, inspection, is actually using the, the camera. And again, I'm sure that's something that would come with practice and, and ease of use, but um, trying to get it to zoom in to see exactly what you want was, was a little tricky. But um, the screen was clear, the camera's brilliant, and um, yeah, it was pretty amazing where it could go. Engaging with Spot was very interesting, um, very different, um, a little nerve wracking, to be honest, and I felt that um, I was potentially going to break it, um, but clearly it, it's quite robust in, in its movements and, and how it interacts. So generally users of the HoloLens were, were quite confident that it would improve the quality of their work and reduce errors. And in terms of the most likely sorts of applications, compartmental checks or inspections being used in warehousing to help with picking of parts. And there seemed to be um, a lot of potential around workplace inductions. It's incredibly light. It's pretty comfortable. I'm just raising a ticket to basically say that one of the struts was missing. I guess my experience was that there was a bit of a learning curve and familiarisation required to work with a HoloLens, that when you first put it on there's information sort of being presented in front of you but you don't necessarily know where to look 
and until you become familiar with where screen's going to pop up, you do a lot of sort of looking around uh, and then you have to start working out, well, how do I actually interact with this system, either with hand gestures or using sort of eye gaze. Uh, and so, it, it, to be honest, it was a bit of a challenge to get started. And the first time around, I was, I was really floundering a bit. Uh, the second time, I found it a bit more intuitive. So I can effectively look at the, um, the two selections or, or any control. And if you look at it for about probably two seconds, it selects it. And in my headset, I can hear a, a little um, audio prompt, I suppose, that's, that's sort of telling me that I'm in the process of selecting something. So if I'm inadvertently doing it, I can hear the, the sound starting to happen, so I can stop doing it if I didn't mean to do it. I could see how it could become a, a useful tool when you actually take it out into the shipyard, um, for, especially for experienced operators who have become familiar with the way the system works. It was probably my favourite of the, of the two. It was a little tricky trying to manage the windows and still see what was in real life around you. But um, again, I think that's a question of familiarity and the, the advantages of, of having all that information at your fingertips while you're doing a task is, you know, is likely to be more and more important over time. SAGE is located all over Australia, in every state, in every territory. We work in every industry with uh, not only our own businesses, but our partners, clients, customers, and the general public. And in remote locations, uh, the option of remote digital support uh, when we don't have the technical expertise on the spot on the ground could be very powerful. Key advantages are that it's hands-free and generally there was uh, good object clarity and the interface itself was not considered to be overly complex by users. However, our workload assessment did show that it was a relatively demanding uh, task and interface to use. There was some inconsistency with recognising eye and hand gestures, as well as um, a little bit of uncertainty around the, the field of view. So at times there was animation and other information not in the immediate uh, field of view, and without that um, instructional support, users weren't aware to, to look uh, to their left or right. So really it's reinforcing that um, quite extensive training in particular would be required when you implement the HoloLens, um, obviously giving people that adjustment uh, to get used to how you need to interact with it. No one can stand still. We've seen a heap of changes in the last decade in terms of things like 3D printing of prototypes, you know, the different testing methodologies and I think these sort of technologies take it to the next step. To be able to work collaboratively with, with new technology is going to make for a, um, a better workforce, it's going to make for better product, um, and it's going to make for, um, for a safer environment too for, um, for people to work. So overall, the research trials conducted here in a real world setting have really reinforced that one technology doesn't fit all. So it's really important to consider the abilities, limitations and preferences of users, as well as the task requirements and the constraints of the work environment. So part of what we're doing is to develop some implementation guides for industry to help them choose uh, which device may be most suited to their particular circumstances. So we really encourage um, SMEs, local manufacturers to reach out, get in contact with us because the more variety of users, um, ultimately the, the better fit um, the technology will be in the long run and the more uh, effective the uptake and adoption will be.